On December 23rd and 24th, 1999, Jonavision, a popular teen-focused talk show, hosted a special two-part episode reuniting many original cast members of Degrassi Junior High and Degrassi High. Both popular series were the brainchildren of creators Linda Schuyler and Kit Hood and served as a sort of continuation to their previous series, The Kids of Degrassi Street. Linda Schuyler was a school teacher when she decided to make four short films focusing on real-life issues kids faced. Skyler turned to her friend Kit Hood, who had experience editing films for Walt Disney, to help her. Through their playing with Time Production Company, they sought out grants and filmed the shorts on shoestring budgets. The short films aired as after-school specials on CBC between 1979 and 1982. They were well-received, so CBC ordered more episodes, and the series grew to a total of 26 episodes, before ending on January 5, 1986. The series won an Emmy and a Gemini Award. After the success of The Kids of Degrassi Street, Skylar and Hood decided to turn their focus on puberty and adolescence with the series Degrassi Junior High. Several actors from Kids of Degrassi Street returned, but with all new roles and lifestyles. On January 18, 1987, the first episode, entitled Kiss Me Steph, aired and focused on Stephanie Kay, an 8th grader experimenting with risque clothing while her best friend Vula helps her to run for class president. Joey Jeremiah, class clown, suggests that Stephanie can get votes by allowing boys to kiss her, and Vula is pushed aside. Degrassi Junior High featured realistic teen issues that didn't always resolve themselves, featured little to no adult intervention, and plot lines that carried over many episodes, seasons, and in many cases, series. The episode It's Late, which focused on Christine Spike Nelson learning she was pregnant by Shane, won an Emmy Award, and has one of the biggest through lines throughout the continuing series. On top of that, the series tackled subjects like shoplifting, body image, homosexuality, abuse, drugs, wet dreams, contraception, death, and much, much more. The third season of Degrassi Junior High ended with the school burning down in Bye Bye Junior High. This gave writers a reason for all the students, not just the grade nines, to transfer to Degrassi High and remain together. Degrassi High was the next series and is essentially seasons four and five of Degrassi Junior High, but rebranded with a new name. The characters and plot lines are continuing on as they transition to high school. The series began with a special two-part episode in which Erica finds out she's pregnant and doesn't want to have the baby. Her twin sister Heather is adamantly against abortion, but in the end supports her through her tough decision. The series covered many other topics including HIV, divorce, moving out, cancer, racism, suicide, and rebellion. Degrassi High concluded with a TV movie entitled Schools Out, the film featured the older kids graduating and planning for their futures. Among the graduates is Caitlin Ryan, who completed extra classes to finish school early. Caitlin isn't ready to have sex with her boyfriend Joey, so he turns to Tessa Campanelli and sees both girls throughout the summer. The film ends on some very dark but hopeful tones, and almost no one, except Alexa and Simon, who get married, have a very happy ending. It is one of the most realistic depictions of the so-called happily ever after of high school graduation. A six-part documentary series entitled Degrassi Talks aired the same year as Schools Out and featured cast members discussing real-life issues portrayed in the show with real-life teenagers. And that was the end of Degrassi, or so it seemed. Let's get back to that Jonavision special two-part reunion. Around this time, Yan Moore, who was a writer on Junior High and High, suggested the idea of a reunion to Linda Schuyler. The two considered this and through their discussions realized that Spike's baby, Emma, would be heading into Junior High herself. Linda Schuyler was now married to her husband, Stephen Stone, and the two had founded Epitome Pictures, a small production company. Stone loved the idea of a continuing series and suggested it be called Degrassi The Next Generation, like the continuation of Star Trek had been dubbed in its sequel series. Degrassi The Next Generation began its first season on October 14, 2001 with a special two-part episode entitled Mother and Child Reunion. The episode introduced Emma Nelson, Spike's daughter, now 12 years old, dealing with her crush on a boy she's met online. At the same time, Spike is getting ready for a class reunion organized by Archie Snake Simpson at the newly opened Degrassi Community School where he is the media immersion teacher. The episode featured a realistic plotline on the dangers of cyber predators while also catching up with many of the now adult characters from Degrassi Junior High and Degrassi High. Budgets went way up from the previous series, professional actors were hired, and it was shot on a studio lot, which worried Skylar at first, but the show managed to keep what was important at its core, realistic depictions of teen issues that don't always resolve themselves. Degrassi The Next Generation continued under this title for 10 seasons before dropping The Next Generation and just being dubbed Degrassi for another 4 seasons. 
Early in its run, Degrassi The Next Generation took ownership of its ability to handle controversial subject matter and adopted the tagline, It Goes There. The series did tackle many of the issues presented in the earlier incarnations – sex, pregnancy, abortion, death, homosexuality, abuse, and drugs – that were all still relevant with modern audiences. But it also upped the game by handling issues that had come to the forefront in the years since – cutting, school shootings, gay dating, trans issues, gang violence, date rape, oral sex, STIs, and texting while driving. The series grew with the new issues teens were facing with the rapid growth of social media, cell phones, and depression. The most recent incarnation of Degrassi was a Netflix series entitled Degrassi, Next Class. It continued the plot lines of many characters from season 14 of Degrassi, but focused even more heavily on the effects of modern technology than the previous series had. Degrassi Next Class ran for four 10-episode seasons and concluded on July 11, 2017. No official cancellation was announced until March of 2019 when Stefan Brogren confirmed that Netflix would not be producing any more episodes. Last year, we were treated to a reunion of sorts with Drake's music video for I'm Upset. Many cast members reunited, and it was very special to see. I am a longtime fan of all iterations of the series, and I hope that it will rise from the ashes once again. But if not, the 38-year run it had was one hell of a ride. Many of the issues have been relatable to me, even in my adult years. It is one of the finest pieces of television I have watched and remains a constant in my life. Thank you for everything, Degrassi. 40 years on, older than me, and still an inspiration to so many.